Hello, hello, hello. Um, with random one another Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the week uh, of emotions for the comic people mostly. I think we are been um we got lost somebody who um made us happy about comics what we try to be <laughs> yeah. uh, we we wanted those happy places to be at no wonder i call this a, a comic therapy in, in, in for the reason this has becomes like a therapeutic for me when i talk about it the escapism from real world but apparently not everybody can do so especially if you just get a sliver of fame um <laughs> so really weird week um mm -hmm. happy no, no i don't i don't think i don't think i can make the happy points at the moment yet in my head i'm still mm. on the limbo <laughs> but, uh, even reading comic books i don't know how you noticed that but i was reading comic books to to get that escapism Andrew lopez mm. hello um <laughs> It's it felt weird after even reading oh, yeah. like happy stories didn't feel really that happy. The saddest stories felt extremely sad. Mm. <laughs> um and you know that level of you know, like oh I you know what it is? One life poof gone away and we still continue. Yeah. And and it's just that concept of well, how <laughs> you know you have to just make your brain work for that towards that so and we, just to reiterate we, we are talking about one and only at pisca of course if you haven't heard the news um it's interesting if you haven't had but if you did um i don't i don't think if this, we are the ones who tell you what happened you go research a little bit more but for sure we know yeah. that he we lost one of a kind to be honest with um intriguing personality to to be honest and having him done whatever yeah you know what he has done or achieved is just, just sad for comic readers yeah for sure yeah and i think i think the the one thing that's interesting you say about like reading and stuff i i had i've had a little bit of a turn in the past couple of days mm -hmm. because i've been exposed to a couple of things that have been incredibly positive so oh. I've heard from a bunch of artists and friends uh, talking. There's this um, YouTube channel and her handle on Twitter is high literature. I guess she was friends with Ed and she was communicating with him during mm -hmm. that time before he, uh, before he killed himself. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard from some other artists like uh, Brandon Graham. They were in talks to each other. Uh, they were talking back and forth. Brandon Graham did a strip about it actually kind of mm -hmm. talking about his thoughts about it and how he yeah, tried so. to help. And then most mm -hmm. recently um, on Instagram, if you guys know, Brian Moss was one of the kind of kayfabe crew. He's got yeah. a, I think it's Stranger Things Moss, I think is what his yeah. Instagram handle is. He's been mm -hmm. doing some live streams where he basically lets people join the live stream to speak about Ed and what he means to them. And like mm -hmm. his... He had some really good thing like a lot of people had a lot of good things to say but he mm -hmm. had a really great thing to say about like you know you don't have to participate in that kind of thing you don't have to participate in the online rhetoric on both sides whatever it is like come here and let's talk about him and remember the positives and things and honestly that's been that's been hugely i watched all of them last night he's got like five short videos up on his instagram i watched mm. them all and honestly just hearing people talk about ed the friendships that they had whether they knew him personally or just were friends or just were fans i mean it to say was really really helpful and i really feel like there's a turn that's happened for me as far as, because it's hard to get it's it's easy to get lost in like the negativity online. So it's really important to try to focus on the positivity. And I'm really, really glad and thankful that there's people out there that are talking positive and looking to kind of help each other. Right. So I think that's really helped me um, the past couple of days for sure. Kind of get a different perspective because before that it was, it was a tough go uh, for the mm -hmm. rest of the week. So. Uh, hi, Gore. Good day. <laughs> it took me away from Dio. Hello, oh. Gore Padal. <laughs> wow, Natalie! Well, we're, we're glad that we sucked you away. Really, from Natalie Portman, I would go there now. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, as a as a um, person who has depression, I think it's, it took me aback a little bit more than anything else. Yeah, um, because of uh, suicide uh, ideas and things 
you know, like um, that's that part is quite difficult to as a concept to accept myself because I've been in in situations not going deep into that that it was something I had to go through my brain and I think it's it's part of the artistic brain that what goes somewhere where you shouldn't really and I think that uh, took more uh, itself like oh reassurance that you you know you're okay but uh, one thing I can tell you really made difference in my psyche or thinking is becoming a mother so that's kind of difficult I, I am like that kind of person where I can't be any more selfish <laughs> when it comes to that point I have somebody to next to me to be ta- to, to take care of and and that really helped to be honest to you even now if I ever would go there I think that would be a saving grace to be honest when it comes to, for me in my brain to say like wake up you know you're not alone you can't just do that to your to anybody you know especially being somebody's you have a child to take care of at the end of the day and I don't want to never feel like you have to as sadly to say and I'm going to share this but my grandmother killed herself and my dad's I've seen my dad after that and I remember clearly her funeral um which isn't great something to remember I was my, my son's actually age I was six and I still close my eyes I can clearly know where I was in the funeral house everything and actual funeral itself was kind of hazy for me but that you know just seeing a person and then that kind of feeling is is there in my country actually for me is well known for suicides which is kind of like a bad thing situation and in saying that but i'm just saying where my headspace was working when yeah. that time that situation happened so it's not easy to digest it's very difficult to understand your yourself where you're standing at you know when you hear news like this especially how quickly you can do that so or can, mm-hmm. how can quickly can everything desk, like escalate you know in that sense so Right. Well, and especially like we were talking about before we went live, like being yeah. in the position that he is. I mean, I can't imagine like the video that I did the other like last week or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. got like 15,000 views. And honestly, it really made me nervous seeing that amount of numbers. I was really looking at the commentary and stuff. Yeah. Um, so on that smaller scale, it's a different mindset. I can't imagine the scale that they were on where that kind of the, that, that uh, um, kind of accusations broke and kind yeah. of the vitriol that he must have received or even just saw online and stuff. I can't imagine what that would do to anybody, even if you had a completely healthy mindset, you know, even if you were a very healthy kind of uh, individual, Ooh. I think that that shit healthy. would have a, a huge impact on you yeah. Um, yeah. I, that I can't even imagine how that would, how that would affect you. The other thing I saw uh, was um, Hart D. Fisher, a, a mm-hmm. comics publisher. He did like a Jeffrey Dahmer comic. He, he's been involved in all sorts of things in like the 80s, I believe, and had his share of kind of trials and tribulations. He eventually left comics and went to work in pornography. Um, and I think is back to comics and things. And he was like, he made a really good point. He said, I think the kayfabe guys, as much as I loved them, he said, I spoke to Jim a lot. I never really spoke to Ed. He's Mm -hmm. like, they were just kind of comic nerds who were sort of playing this part of outlaws. And I think that when it comes to, because he said he easily could have written that stuff out and I wanted to get in touch with him to help him and help guide him and things. Mm Because him going through all the stuff that Hart D. Fisher went through coming out on the other side, um, he he, he said he could have gotten through, he could have come through the other end of it, but Mm -hmm. he just wasn't built like that. It was, it was almost like, the outlaw was sort of like a kayfabe kind of thing, right? Like it was a real kind of cloak that they wore where if you're going to kind of represent that kind of thing, you have to be able to take the heat. And I just don't think he could take the heat because he got mm-hmm. such a huge amount of heat. It was ridiculous. Uh, in that same vein, I watched a video from another creator regarding this shunning uh, and its effects on a person referencing Ed's note. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey Damien, hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh-huh. Totally, and that's and that's a that's exactly what we've been talking to my daughter about. Of like things look sometimes really dark, and I mm-hmm. I remember my time in school. I had some really dark times in high school, Oof. especially like yeah. incredibly dark, where I thought, "All right, this is just my life. This is just the way that it is. I guess it's gonna be horrible the rest of my life." And you just don't have that perspective to see 
five mm-hmm. years down the line, I think at some of those ages. And we've really tried to reinforce that with, with our daughter recently of like, listen, come and talk to us. Like things do get better. Trust us. You know, like we're pretty honest with our kids about our lives. Um, yeah. I've told them all sorts of shit that I, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't tell everybody. And I've, I've kind of talked to them about stuff. Right. And I think it's important to give them that perspective. Like, yeah, things can get really bad, but they do get better, you know, and there is help out there. And I think that's, that kind of thing is crucial. Cause when you're in that tunnel, man, holy fuck, that is some, um, it's scary stuff. It's really scary. You know, hmm. I don't know. I mean, you're very brave even having conversation with the kids, especially my mom um, have never, t- well, my parents, let's say never talked about feelings in general. I wasn't brought up with feelings more like yeah, a- either was I really. Yeah. A very like you know restrained hide away yeah. those things don't show that to public because you never know what they have feelings towards you and i'm trying to change that kind of in my own perspective but <laughs> testing t- still testing my parents so i talk to my mom quite often yeah and i was talking about that and my mom was just like one sentence and we changed she changed subject right away it was like whoa that was quick <laughs> It's like a big issue. like, but I wanted, like, I, I like, I wanted to just to, you know, see how, you know, like, what's my po- point 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 of view. But she just like just shunned me. Like, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I was very fast. But that's how it was. It is with my parents. But no, nothing new for me. Nothing surprising. But it still kept, kind of like I keep keep on like uh, treading that line to see if they're gonna get to that point. But no. Um. <clears throat> I mean, part of it, part of it, talking yeah. to her was didn't really have a choice because, um. Yeah. It was uh, John DaCosta and and uh, John Joan and Jello, yeah. um, who had reached out to me to say, "Holy shit, Terrence!" And yeah. then I read it, and I kind of stopped reading his letter, going, "Guys, like, seriously, I can't read the rest of this. This reads like a suicide letter. Please tell me that he did." And they're like, "I'm so sorry, he did." And I made a noise out loud. I was downstairs here in the basement, and I, I yelled out loud that my family came running down the stairs because you know mm-hmm. thought maybe there was something that happened with my family or something like that and it was so it kind of put me in the position of like kind of half you know sort of forced to at least start talking about it and she was super receptive and she was just really interested she asked some she asked some intense questions um and we tried to answer as best as we could but it was yeah I mean it was it was it's the positive out of it, right? So like uh, this horrible fucking situation, mm. the positive, of, like at least trying to talk about it with her, you know, so. I mean, I think talking about it in general should be open more yeah. to what it is. Uh, talking to uh, Damien's point, the human brain needs someone to talk to. We definitely do, but not all, all of us can accept that we have something wrong going with us. So approaching somebody else to talk to that, that's why I was saying like, if I even approach my, for example, even my mom, mom who doesn't really want to accept that kind of thing, you know, because they suicide is not something people talk lightly about or even accept it as a, a choice you're supposed to do doing because it becomes first thing very selfish because there's other people surrounding you next to you who, you know, like still support you, like your family and friends, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But it's yourself, if you have a like talking point, depression point of view, having help towards that is very difficult your kind of self kind of needs to kind of like force yourself to actually go for it and you second triple five times guess yourself before you do that so it's not very Mm -hmm. easy actually it's much easier to talk to stranger who doesn't have a clue about you whatsoever and you right. know those help help nice people keep on screaming on the phones and saying on the on the web since i just talk to stranger really is what you need because yep. they don't have a clue who you are. They don't have any totally. perception. No towards, yeah, there's no perception about your, yourself. You don't know your habits. You don't know who, what ticks you, what's good for you, what's bad for you. And they're quite plain, mm-hmm. simple, straightforward with you. And it's really refreshing, when, especially when you're so or dime inside your brain. You, you can't escape. Somebody just like almost like you slaps your brain a couple of times and you like kicks that... Uh, part where you feel like oh how dare you talking to me like that but that jars you back kind of thing mm-hmm. start fighting for yourself once again and that's the good part when your brain says to you you have to fight because somebody offended you for example in in, in some ways that's your fight back your your, your brain is yep. already saying okay wait 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 this is not something is wrong but straight talking to strangers is much more vital 
when your family at the beginning. I know family will say, oh, come talk to us. I'll, I'll help you. I understand you. But there's something with them. Your family knows yeah. your, your thing. They know you from the, you know, like your mother, your brother, your sister, whatever. Your, even your best friend will know a lot of things about you. But the dark side, they don't, you're not aware of it. So mm -hmm. it's high, I, I highly recommend if you have whatever helplines there's possible for you to get, talk to stranger. Sit yeah. down in the park and if you're brave enough to talk to stranger, talk to stranger in the park. It's just so much better. And I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it helped, like I had phone conversations because I had a medical depression, but I had phone conversations with somebody and that helped. It kind of, it was kind of rude to me. I was like, mm, sometimes, but like, make you feel like you're a child in some point, but yeah. there, it's just the way they kind of dissect you, who you are and how to approach your conversation, of course. And that was something really helped to be honest. And I was like, Really? And you're like, fight back, because I'm very much fight back all the time. So yeah. it really worked for me. I just start fighting back a, a lot. Like, no, I am not going to accept this. And I actually was almost swearing to the person. Like, what the f I was like, well, there you go. you back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. that's how it is. You know, you're working. Your brain is working yeah. for you. Anyway, so... Um, <sighs> Yeah, I think that this this that Gore says here. I was I thought that too early in the week. I'm I'm really happy to kind of report that from what I've been seeing, there was a lot of people that reached out to him and that yeah. were talking to him the week before he killed himself. Like there was a lot of people. Um, I was saying before you came into the stream, Gore, even guys like uh, uh Brandon Graham. I didn't realize they were still pretty tight. Um, yeah. you know, so he was talking to quite a few people. And there was a bunch of people that were trying to give him resources and things. They were trying to help him and point mm -hmm. him in a direction, right? Like this high literature is what she goes by on Twitter. I know mm -hmm. she has a YouTube channel as well. I think it's called the same thing, HI literature. She's mm -hmm. pretty tight with him and had sent him some videos to try to help him give, get some perspective. Um, so it's, it's, it's good to see that there was quite a few people that were reaching out to him. I'm sure he still felt all the things that he felt. Um, mm -hmm. and obviously it ended the way that it did, but, uh, I think that there was a lot of, there was a lot of people reaching out to him by the sounds of it. Yeah. If you saw tweets, things said the nose working with him. How they, him and the... Yeah. I don't know how accurate that is. Andrew Lopez. I don't know if those were necessarily friends of his you know what i mean like there was a lot of horse shit said online for sure there yeah. was no doubt about it yeah. um and there was a lot of kind of bad faith on on both sides using it as some kind of cudgel to to fight each other as opposed to dealing with the issue but that's when you just step away from that kind of horse shit like you know and i blocked so many new people this past week when I would see threads, I mean, cause that's my, I've always talked about it on, on the streams for all these years. Mm. My social media intake is very limited. If there's things I just don't want in my feed, I block people. Um, I have no issue with it. I don't fucking know them. I have no guilt about it whatsoever. And especially mm. when it comes to comics, I don't, some of that discourse around comics, I just don't understand. There's literally people dying by the tens of thousands on the planet. And people want to bicker about comics go fuck yourself that's to me that's it's stupid i just don't get it who gives a shit if a movie has a woman playing a superhero character as opposed to oh a man? yeah you so who so fucking so. cares <laughs> who fucking cares there's fucking people dying in palestine and gaza like give your fucking head a shake and get some perspective so those people i have no guilt on blocking them real quick because i just don't need it in my uh -huh. life and mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that everybody needs to be more conscious of when you're in social media. Like if there's toxic things, why would you want that in your life? Why would you want to sign on to social media and be inundated with toxicity and negativity? Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. don't get it unless it's like, I love politics. So there's a lot of that I have in my feed that I haven't blocked because I think that's important. I think that that shit is important. Knowing what's going mm -hmm. on in the world, I think is more important. Knowing that there's some fuck face Van Skyver douchebag who doesn't like oh. superheroes. I don't care. I just don't <laughs> care. You can, he can have his opinion. I don't need to hear it, you know? So, well, yeah. And I really everyone... wish people would take away some of that from all this situation, like to, 
Mm. You don't have to put every thought in your head down on the computer. It doesn't mm. come from here and right to the keyboard. I, I just, it's bizarre mm. to me is all, you know, so anyway, tirade over, rant over. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, it's, I didn't see all the storm when it comes to Silver Surfer. Elected, I like the actress they picked up. Yeah, she's fantastic to be honest. She has really good chops when it comes to like emotions, and I, I calculate that in my brain as an actress. You know, we, if you portray emotions to a point where you make you teary yourself after she's almost bawling her eyes out, it's a good acting, isn't it? Almost yeah. feels real. So there is a female silver surfer. In the comic books, in continuity, in Marvel comic books. So surely, if they have a choice to pick that one instead of the most famous of the surfer, it's they progress, you know, they they choice, they want to do so. Um, but you know, I know maybe people are oh, you silver surfer is in such a high up because everybody wants Galactus and Silver Surfer going at it in the cinematic universe. And I guess that's why they went to like <gasps> Oh dear, they are not gonna see that kind of beautiful thing, you know, those <laughs> covers of uh, number, you know, those whatever run of Silver Surfer there had been. Right. Um, but you know, I don't know, I can't judge something just because there's one thing. I don't know, maybe they'll do something right. amazing with her. You know, I've read some of the stuff in the continuity of female like, um, um, Silver Surfer. And I was fa fascinated by it, but I, I haven't finished it because I have quite an extensive run of Silver Surfer, to be honest. Not the original one, never was able to get right. hold of it because of a price tag. went crazy. But it's great. It it's actually would be quite curious to see. And then because of his female and all that stuff, people are just going to go up, the, up their own ass. But until you're not going to see the oh, movie, yeah. it's no point. What's the point yeah. of getting angry? It's well, and that, that goes with what we were saying before we went live, like this whole judgment yeah. thing, right? Like people are so quick to judge online, mm -hmm. it feels like. And yeah. I, I I think, again, it's this reminder that I've had of like, there's a whole bunch of other people outside of social media that don't do those sort of things. But I think like we we all judge things on a daily basis. You know, it's part of being a human. You're judging cynic. You're judging situations. You're judging mm. people for safety, all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. But I think like the judgment part of what happened with Ed was just so swift and yeah. so kind of everybody was speaking with authority and it was like, motherfucker, you, we don't know. We don't know shit. I've seen mm -hmm. someone that I've never heard of before showing messages supposedly that they had together. I don't know if any of it is real. I don't even know if mm -hmm. this person is real. You know what I mean? Like, so to jump to this conclusion that it's fact. And we were talking before we went on of like, People started throwing around the word pedophile when it came to him. And that, mm. that's the one that made me really angry because, I mean, that's a pretty specific fucking word. And from what I understand, he wasn't accused of any sort of pedophilia of having sex with minors, which is like preteens is what the definition of pedophile is like. But people throwing around those words and making judgments were just so crazy, man, like to go off the deep end. And what's that expression? A lie makes it around the planet while the truth is just putting on its shoes or whatever that expression is, something like that. Like it travels so goddamn fast and it's mm. hard to come back from once that shit is out there. And people were parroting that stuff and it's just really distasteful. And it's really, which is why, again, it's so crucial to look for stuff that is healthier when it comes to those kind of things. And I'm, I give a huge shout out. I know he'll never see this, but Brian Moss is doing an amazing, amazing service. He's doing incredible stuff. I mm. highly encourage you, if you're on social media, to find him on Instagram. Watch those streams. It's so helpful seeing complete strangers talking about what Ed meant to them. It really puts things in perspective for yourself as well, too, and just mm. gives you an opportunity to share. He's doing it now, actually. And then he has the parents on. I think he's hoping to get the parents on tonight. Uh, and then was. he's doing another one tomorrow as well. And then that'll be it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a good opportunity to kind of get some perspective on how people are processing this stuff. So it's really, uh, it's really, it, it's great. It's really great to see that there's some really, really good hearted people, people out there. Mm. Yeah. The grooming yeah, for sure. And that that grooming word is thrown around quite a bit as well, too. Yeah. By the way, that video of parents, it 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 were it was on just before we did 
come on live. Oh, I really? Oh, okay. on, on Instagram, I, I, I'm I'm looking to uh, follow the Ed family, the, the legacy part of Ed Pisco and stuff like that. So, yes. just curious to see if that you know, like, wanted to see if the person's actual thing gonna go forward and keep on moving in the positive light like you say i was looking for positivity so i saw the parents the, the mother and, and the siblings were on with him so amazing people curious to see it is like we say go to that um instagram post and you will see it. yeah there is an instagram group there's going to be a facebook group the k fam or something like that the kayfabe family that they're looking to do Brian mm -hmm. was talking about potential of doing like a sketchbook, collecting a lot of people's arts when they art, when they did kind of portraits of Ed and collecting those into a book. They're mm -hmm. looking to kind of continue on. Even Brian is maybe going to get himself involved with like people sending in comics that they've worked on so he can spotlight them on his Instagram. So trying to keep up some of that positive work that they were doing. It seems like there's a bunch of people that are, are looking to take up the mantle, which again, like positivity out of all this, you know, so. Yeah, it's it was yeah, there. Multiple well, women rights where two other women came forward and made some accusations like yeah. And anyway. don't forget, there's still always there's this two sides of the coin of this full story, and we don't like we yeah. we don't know nothing. Still nobody right. knows, probably nobody will find out fully, but there's a consequences to all of them, to be honest. For her, like they like if the first one, whatever the person's near uh girl's name is. It's going to be um, all your you know? or something. Yeah, it's this cartoonist, Nate Garcia, that I've talked about before. Yeah. It's his girlfriend, apparently, which I, yeah. I didn't know until very recently. And then, yeah, Damon, I think I heard something saying that she didn't want it to be this crazy, but it came spew out more than anything else. And that's what happens when you spew something out in the uh, in, 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 And in it's the just such a childish way to look at the world. Like, you're just going to say something like that and it's just going to go away like... Come on. Anyway, I don't want to go down that path. Anyway, yeah. Let's not do it. Yeah. Anyway, it's a hard, hard things topic to talk about, but there's all sides of the coin. We don't know uh, about true stories. It's super yeah. easy to talk about. That's the sad thing, right? Like, and I yeah. think a lot of this stuff, and that's where it's like this yeah. self censorship and what's what's helpful versus what's harmful is where yeah. that's so important. Of you, you ultimately have a choice in what you're gonna say. So there's mm. things that are helpful and things that are harmful. Like some of the people kind of dancing on his grave, so to speak, the day that it happened was just disgusting. And those people made those choices to write those things and put them out there in the world. And mm. it's just, that's very telling of you as a person. If that's your response to things in public, you know, when something horrible like this happens, right? So it's unfortunate. They're free to make their own decisions, but it's just unfortunate that yeah. they don't have that perspective on things. Mm. Anyway, it's what are you different. gonna do? Yeah, read more comics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a powerful need to be. Yeah, well, we need to learn, and we unfortunately learn from from lots of things, and in, in not the same regard as everybody else. So, unfortunately, yes, social media can be very powerful, but can be very horrible place as well to be in. But <clears throat> let's talk comics, eh? That's what we here for. We yeah, had our, our, our couple notes to discuss oh talk about did you watch x-men cartoon by any chance <laughs> i haven't seen it no i i've heard really good things about it though like i've heard it's, oh, really? it's pretty great i mean i watched the cartoons and i was like i don't know if i feel correct <laughs> because i was like i might feel like a child now and i'm like giddy because this cartoon yeah. back on or am i feeling like wow i aged but it doesn't feel like that because there's some uh voice differences for sure from one original one okay that uh thing with gambit's uh, clothing that never has been my favorite clothing style from the era anyway right but when i see saw him there it's like really did you have to put it there anyway oh look at who's here hello odd fellows thoughts uh-huh Hello. Yeah, no, nobody's blame, nobody's blaming any, nobody's blaming anybody here. There, Travis. No, there's no yeah. blame Who's anywhere speaking here. Speaking comics now. Oh, yeah. look. Speaking of comics, Gorvidal has really the magic miniseries. Nice. This morning, can't believe it came out. Yeah. Don't speak it a time. <laughs> That's what I found out when I was watching, uh, cartoon X Men cartoon. It's just like. Wow, that's so long. 
<laughs> since I watched it. Uh, when I was, uh, but it's really good for uh, so far as there's four episodes, and I absolutely uh, like all of them. Actually, surprised how much like I felt like I didn't know anything, but then my brain caught up with me. Like you know, you watch something, and you're just like, do I know X Men? <laughs> But then slowly, kind of surely, everything. And then they went with the Magic Prior um, part. I was uh, kind of ignorant because I always thought that she was just a character, which was like the bad guy. But then I, she's actual clone of, of Jean Grey, which was something a miss when I was a fan of X-Men somehow. And I, but, but then the cartoon was showing basically how that came about. I was like, okay, cool, great. So now I understand <laughs> kind of part of that. So really good. I am enjoying it so far. I, I'm really cool. glad um, that they are um, uh, out and about uh, doing this stuff, especially in, in the same era with all the all the Jubilee. And Jubilee looks fun as it was kind of quirky at the beginning when I was thinking she would never be my favorite char character, but there's an episode now when she ends up being in the, um, the game. Uh, and uh, it was really cool, to be honest, like a very old school feel to it. And it's, I, just, I don't know, I just I have good things to say. And for people who has not watched it, highly recommend. If you are at all interested in in that side of the of the things that like cartoons, uh, for me it's like a thing. <laughs> I was like mm -hmm. happy, go back to be happy again. You know, like watching that. Right. So, they're but, doing yeah. it in kind of like that old style too, right? From what oh, I've yeah, seen. Oh yeah, everything, it, everything. Yeah. The soundtrack awesome. is still the same. Uh, the the introduction to the cartoon sort of maybe a little bit more like you know like more. Um, these days, like like we did something to the soundtrack. Modernized, I can't put, whatever, yeah. Yeah, a little bit more nice, maybe. Uh, but it, it still feels like you watching the you know the X Men. You know, you knew from there. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely want to check it out because I I was a fan of the cartoon. You know, like I did watch the cartoon. It was yeah, it was cool. great, man. I'm glad. Well, I I know you don't like X Men that much, so I was yeah, I'm not super one. crazy about them, but the cartoon is is you know it was huge. Like you know. Yeah. yeah, because we are. Movie. I'm a nerd, so uh, it was car comics on cartoons. I watched it. Oh yeah, another naysayer yeah. for female silver surfer. Hey, is, she's another herald. I mean, there's a herald, female herald. There's a few of them, isn't that like? I, I'm not sure. I'm not big, big of Lord Damon, maybe. Honestly, I or, don't know. Yeah. Or yeah, I'm not really fully like versed in silver surfer. Uh, history mm -hmm. in generally, but I definitely know there's a female. I was even as surprised when I was reading it. Well, there's a female one as well. Um, mm -hmm. so we'll see how that's gonna be. I all all sorts of things. I'm not really um judgy because I don't know what they the, the new phase of Marvel, whatever cinematic universe is gonna be like. Actually, talking about that, I watch Marvels, the people who doesn't like didn't like the Marvels movie with a uh, Captain Marvel? Um, yeah. What is her name? and the two other ones, the Photon and what uh, what's her name? Um, the new uh, one, the, yeah. the 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 Indian Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm I, I like always when you do live chat, my the, the names <laughs> and everything just goes like. Whoa! escaped um just to I, Laura's point there of it's a surprise because there are many naysayers here i.e film yeah. female circle surfer i yeah. think that that's where this show probably feeds feeds them really well because it's exactly like it was when i was a kid and you know all these kind of things so it's not yeah. too surprising that even those naysayers would be on board with it because they tried to keep it the same Oh yeah, there you go. This was nineties, but not no. But yeah, I like you even saying two one. So I I definitely think there is two. So, mm -hmm. and then what he says, Ghana can take uh, take me on the surfboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, she's where she was like extremely good at Ozark. That's what that's where I I kind of know her mo most about it. She made me really like like feel uncomfortable in that series. Did you watch? Did Ozark? you read the? Did you read the the all red Silver Surfer run? Uh, no, uh, it's worth it's worth checking out. It was it was really good. It just what Gore said there really reminds me of it because he became almost like a Doctor Who kind of character where he found this uh -huh. human and brought her along with him to kind of explore the universe and stuff. Like it was a really it was a really mm -hmm. good it was a really fun run. Me and my son were reading it. Uh, I've still got them. I... He's still got them in the boxes. It was good, man. 
I remember you were talking about it. I remember I was clearly intending to read it, but now I don't recall if I have because all Red's art are usually quite in your face, not in a, not in a bad way, but I'm talking about colors, mm -hmm. color choices, which is absolutely fantastic. And especially in the, in the space, I think color is fantastic. But talking about the movie, which you just brought me on my train of thought, I like the movie. I don't yeah. know why. It's it's very easy to watch. And the most disgusting thing I, uh, about the movie was the cat, you know, that tentacle things of the cat. And there was oh, okay. multiple oh, yeah. of them. And they were absorbing people just because they needed to escape space station. And I was, you know, like every single time you watch somebody <laughs> blap, yeah. blap somebody, like burp something out, somebody out, especially such a small animal, <laughs> a big human. It's just making me like, queasy at times. I was like, am I going to do this in front of the television? But yeah. I don't know. I just, it's such an easy watching thing. It's nothing to brainstorm, nothing crazy happened, but I just really, like, I kind of enjoyed it. I liked uh, Kamala Khan Nagel. I remember the name, Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. And I really liked her ca uh, character. I liked the extra material more than maybe the the movie in itself, the extras, you know, right at the end. They were fascinating mm -hmm. because there was X-Men. There was the Beast. Oh, there was cool. a photon. And there was um, uh, Hawk Girl in there. And that's, oh, that's much as, yeah. I, as much as I say. But I don't know if we're going to take that shoot in that part anymore because, as I say, the phase is high. And the direction where they're taking Marvel movies are completely in different side of it, yeah. I think. I'm yeah. just I'm just hopeful that uh, Galactus makes some sort of appearance. I would love to see that on a big screen. I would love to see galactus mm. devouring a planet and you know like it would just be yeah it would be so i'm, I'm looking forward to it I'll, I'll i'll be curious to see it oh i love lex it's extremely absurd space exploration. oh yeah what yeah that i know it i've bizarre. never seen it i know it though yeah the guy with the hair like like this it needs like oh it's just really weird it's is it disaster. a good show though like did you enjoy it did you watch well i was it? watching in in that time when it was coming out yes i loved it yeah yeah cool um like yeah blew my mind kind of thing ah cool yeah. i'll have to check it out i know the name but i've never seen an episode okay cool i, I like jilla willow wilson whatever i've read so far um mm. but marvel you see i'm, I'm a bit Kind of, it's been tainted Marvel for me lately. Whatever, whatever new stuff it came out with, but yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a seems to like there's plenty of pre-existing female characters in the fifth world, so slightly surprised the felt needed to gender swap the surfer. Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. It's the way of the way of the yeah. world, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's look uh, at that. the, I love the sound. Recommending it, I will absolutely. Look for it. Go ahead. I'm listening. It's, a, it's very bizarre series, but I really like the intro sound. So, you know, the bizarre intro. is good. Yeah. So it's not all your conventional things you would when it comes to space exploration. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, so I watched that. So because I was sick, which I most of the time lately, I feel like I am mm -hmm. always have. I have even now while I'm actually talking to you guys, I feel like I'm gonna have again. I, last week I just recovered from tonsillitis and I seem to be, I think I'm getting again. This, <laughs> so, and I have two weeks or like my my son is on holidays for, because of Easter. This is quite a big break in UK and the mm -hmm. kids are on holiday for two weeks, which is absolutely oh, wow. crazy for me. Yeah, it's like they treating Easter like Christmas in here. And I was like, I was so certain it would be just a week. And I had my mindset mm. set, you know, like I have plenty, blah, blah. And then they um, and then my mother was like, "Oh, so glad it's gonna be only. Oh, it's gonna be two weeks of holidays." Like, what? <laughs> I was like, my brain completely <laughs> forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, I completely shut that way. And I was like, "No, it's yeah." Lily, Lily just had uh, the one week uh, spring break. Uh, it was just a week. That's yeah. what you would think it would be normal, but no. In in yeah. in here in UK, we have two weeks, so I still have mm. one week. My son doing whatever hell he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, yeah, go and the ladies of Gal versus Gal <laughs> Yeah, he's saying that Garner, Natalie, and Scarlett Johansson could take me to space. I'm with you on Scarlett Johansson. Got oh, yeah, she's she's a babe. Scarlett uh, Johansson's a babe. I'll take Natalie anytime before Scarlett anytime. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Scarlett can word. go actually go have a get, walk with somebody else, and I take Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take her, I'll take her for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my oh. wife, uh, my wife, her her uh, Marvel Universe crush is um. You go on. What the hell is that actor's name that plays uh, the Hulk? What the heck is his name? Well, the the oh what oh why are you blanking? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's that's my Mark wife's uh, Marvel crush. Mar yeah, Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's a really cool yeah. choice. To be honest. Oh yeah, no, she's got a huge crush on him. She's had a crush on him for a long time. Okay, so have you? I haven't watched um, uh, Poor Things. Have you guys watched Poor Things? Did and loved it. Oh, I love. I, I loved Poor Things. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I was the soundtrack yeah. is fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The movie itself mm -hmm. is is beautiful. I'm a fan mm -hmm. of the director, even though I've only seen a couple of his movies. I've seen The Lobster and uh, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. The mm -hmm. Lobster is still one of my favorites. I, I really enjoy that one. He's got a bunch of other ones, too, that I haven't seen. But Poor Things was so, so good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Me and my wife were both surprised at how much we liked it. Um, it's it's well worth seeing there, uh, Gore Vidal. Oh. Yeah, and I can, I can understand that. I think it's really just really presented amazingly well like you're seeing the world through her eyes and mm. it's all very yeah it's, the sets are unreal the the builds on that movie are pretty impressive the the amount mm. of things that they build yeah the lobster is so good yeah such a bizarre premise uh yeah really worth seeing uh, it's nice to see that there's modern directors that are kind of taking chances on stuff i think i've said it in a stream before but that that kind of you do, I find myself even doing the same thing. We're all prone to it. You get into this idea of like, there's nothing good anymore. It doesn't happen to me too, too much, thankfully, because I've got a son that's got a really amazing taste in things and has turned me on to a whole bunch of stuff, music and film wise, that I never mm -hmm. would have seen without his kind of uh, input on it. Mm -hmm. But um, it is nice to see that there's directors out there still kind of doing things in a different way and presenting stories that are, not as run of the mill as 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 you would expect from kind of Hollywood or whatever. Even though I, he's maybe Hollywood adjacent, but yeah. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo was in it as well, isn't it? Yeah, he sure was. Yeah, and he was he was so fucking good in it, man. He was so like the thing with the the thing with the thing that surprised me the most about Poor Things is how funny it was. There was uh -huh. so many funny scenes, and Mark Ruffalo was usually. <laughs> one of the characters that he just his portrayal of that character is so oh. hilarious it was really really good and apparently they did it on set like he he would just do these things and the director would kind of encourage him like no do that yes do that more yeah yeah they absolutely do it's it's totally true travis i know you're in a similar boat with your son it's 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 amazing like we do the family radio show every saturday or most saturdays and there's always every week, even from Lillian as well, like, a you know, no, not throwing shade on my daughter, but from my son, especially because him and I share pretty similar tastes. Uh -huh. Some of the stuff he plays me, it's it's weekly that he blows me away with something that he's chosen to play on the show that sounds mm -hmm. incredible of a band I've never heard of, you know, and same mm -hmm. with movies. He's really into movies these days. Him and his friends have started making some little short films and things. Mm -hmm. So he's really into movies. And some of the stuff he's watching, I never would have heard of without uh, without him kind of turning me on to them. So yeah, it's great. That's cool. I really want to watch the the both. I'm, I'm looking for a proper time kind of things, headspace, <laughs> the right headspace. I really uh, like Emma Stone. To her, yep. I whatever I watch of her, I always in mind, no matter which kind of. Still, the um, the the favorite movie is, and I'm blanking now. The A thing, what is that? Um, the name of that movie? It's very cheesy. Uh, school. Not sure. Um. Oh, what's the name? Oh, I'm blanking. Anyway, so she was a, a school in a school, and she was bullied because she was looking different, and she actually oh. kind of like it's kind of permanent to that thing. Like people gets really like you know at school she was bombarded with all of the stuff from the and they were making fun of her. And then she decided to have a rumor done and it exploded to a, to a proportion where nobody wanted, she didn't want it to take to that point, but it went completely crazy where she may end up uh, thinking that she was sleeping with teachers in the school. Anyway, it's really good. I absolutely love that. That's one of my, my favorite or first things which I discovered her by. 
and I really like it to this day. But I like her my, generally as, a, as an actor. My favorite is still uh, Super Bad. It's one of the, yeah. the funniest comedies ever. Uh, I remember I was with my still with my son's uh, mom at that time, and she's like mm -hmm. a, a university professor and studying, mm -hmm. you know, teaching uh, psychology yep. and all these kind of things. We went to see uh, Super Bad, and she was a little skeptical seeing someone that's, you know, maybe a little more intellectual and, you know, just pissing herself laughing at super bad was so it made it even, even better than it already was. It's still one of those movies I can watch and it's just so goofy. And so it's so funny. So, so funny. That was the first time I remember that's seeing the, her. It's true. Rick Ray, thanks. It's easy. A. Oh, I've never heard of that's that one. Watch, but I mean, it's 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 quite you know like as I say, if you want to get that, you know, it would be maybe for your daughter would be quite interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if you want to, you know, I don't know really. It's preteens, but kind of difficult because it's also comes with bullying and stuff like that, and then oh, two extremes. Uh, it sure as hell is Rick Ray. I've seen it quite a few times, and uh, yeah, I it still makes me laugh, mm -hmm. like anyway, Napoleon so Dynamite. Those two still make me laugh when I watch them. So there's a good class, but I li I really like I'm I'm talking about Emma Stone that her choice is where she wants to be at, and she's never yep. afraid to go in very many directions. But she's really interested. It seems to be they gave her space to do what she can, and she just took it. Well, That's she was, and she was a thing. producer as well on Poor Things. Like her and the director have built up a real solid friendship. And oh, it wow. sounds okay. like that they want to do more together. So she yeah, was yeah. a she was a big kind of, you know, she put her money where her mouth is. She actually was producer on on Poor Things, um, and as well as I th I think it's an amazing performance in it. Her the way her character kind of grows through it, I think, is super interesting and engaging. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I I really dug it. Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. Now we can talk about comics. <laughs> sure. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, we'll get there eventually. To, do, yeah, do you want to? No, no, you go ahead. You go first. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'll go. I I went somewhere where um, I thought I'll explore, and I wanted to buy a cheap. Oh open book. yes. And I decided to go to the Spawn Universe kind of type of a comic called Sam and Twitch. It's detective type of a story. It's been, I've, I've read it before, some of it. It didn't really recollect a lot of information in my brain, but I just wanted to do it. So it's uh, McFarlane, Kudar, Kudransky, and Placentia. Placentia, is that how you pronounce it? Placentia. Anyway, um, in the in team. It's because of a price tag, $2.99. I mean, come on. And there's a talk we have, uh, I think Damien was talking on live, they mentioned about <clears throat> Big Two having the co the comic covers are uh, so floppy and they warping in uh, humid conditions. And for two ninety nine comic book, you have like a cardstock cover, cardstock. It's like proper, go like, <laughs> and the price tag is uh, is like phenomenal. It's just so crazy how much we pay for comic books these days. But Spawn and this one, it seems to be continue going to be two ninety nine, which is interesting i don't know how far this this will take i i don't see many of previews and ahead of stuff i never plan unfortunately but for me it's okay i'll see if i actually the story will make me interested to go forward not a fan of spawn at all but admirable that mcfarland keeps it yeah yeah it's very admirable maybe because he has this uh toy line i always speculate because of that he's able to just pour out this as a yes you know Thing where you can just you know if it loses the money fine but if it's it continuously and people still buying it why the hell not to keep that on the shelves which is absolutely amazing anyway so um uh, let's see oh so script and plot by Todd McFarlane and co-plot by John Goff who's I don't know who's Goff is I've never heard of him beforehand um anyway so the story starts with this uh, theme where a guy or uh, escapes and what what it really jar jarred me is that the there's no bubbles speech bubbles it's just like words in the corners it doesn't have the surrounding frame which kind of uh, took me afar um the art style uh, is is really works for you after the more you go read the story i really like this uh, panel situations which you follow the bullet 
going dropping down on the floor. That's really fantastic. But you have the uh, two coppers who's dealing with a, um, a case, and this is the Sam guy, and he basically goes after his informant, breaks his nose, and your famous crack the crack is there. Look, Terence, eh? um, and and basically he's pissed off with this informant. He's basically go goes. Uh, at him, he's like, "You're not going to ruin my case. I'm going to deal with this." And I don't know what's happening, to be honest. It's, it's, it's like I don't know if there was a story before that or not. Um, but like from the fresh point of view, it just like, feels like a bit confusing at, at times when you're reading it. Um, and then uh, it seems to be that Sam is always gets in trouble with all of them. And the Twitch is this guy, his companion, or, or you know, like works together with him. And uh, he is the one basically keeps Sam in check. Um, and we have them basically being told to uh, go 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 uh, on a month kind of um, leave because they we, we crossed the line because the kid actually kid's mother knew some governor and they got a uh, word of it and they giving they uh, chief in charge of the of the place. A bad uh, rep and they basically he decides that it's no more i don't want to do this anymore and of course sam is like i don't believe it i use bullshit nobody can talk to me like that it's kind of really loud mouth but the the mystery is some sort of mystery surrounds it it's not much i can tell you a lot but it's intriguing enough to be honest and that kind of thing i uh, you know, it helps to to have this comic book being as cheap as it is, because I'm not I'm not gonna doubt myself by, by going to get the number one. One of my favorite double splash page splash. Yeah, sweet. There is this crazy murder, and they're gonna go at it. So that's what what keeps it going. This one, and um, it's quite gruesome. As the 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 place where they are, and they're gonna go. Somebody are gonna ask them to for help to deal with this situation, and it didn't go further than that in in the story. And then just two pages of ads, and that's it. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing, to be honest. It's really nice to look at. Looks like a puzzle. It is. It's it's meant to be some sort of pu puzzle yeah. happening. Very uh, so, yeah. J H Williams looking those pages. Yeah, it's it's as I say, surprisingly enough, the, the more I was looking, it's I, I you know like when you just get uh, the art at first, you know you know expecting the art to be like because as I say, it's so com completely fresh. I never looked inside and non never looked previews, but uh, this part is really entertaining. I think it's one of the best parts of the comic book in general because I, yeah, I am a cool. sucker for the detective storyline, so I'll see how far it will get. If it's going to be intriguing, I'll let you know. Maybe you'll, you'll want to read it up, but just because of... I mean, as, as I say, I I heard about them beforehand. If you're at all looked up Spawn, you probably will have heard of Sam and Twitch. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I picked it up. It's number one. I was surprised it's there. And there's this new logo, new you. I don't know what is that mm. maybe new. You know, they have their own universes and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's intriguing enough. When but I, it's, uh... I, Yeah, go on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just intriguing enough. The product, it's really good in comparison yeah. to what you ever get get from the the thing, you know, the big two or something, or even sometimes in images. To be honest, sometimes image comic books, I wouldn't say have really fantastic covers as well. Kind of flimsy as well. Paper these days, the paper is quite a big issue, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Rasa, will you be? Um, no, no. Oh no, no. I never do. Dr. I'm. Yeah, the uh, I am I as a as big fan of X Men I am I am really not one uh, getting to the point of X Men books to to read because of it's just so convoluted it becomes overblown or out of proportion I get confused and I rather you know what I do usually I read the classics so that's where I go back because mm -hmm. I still feel believe well. Hickman got me back to buying comic books when he released that Hickman story about X-Men. Remember, everybody <clears throat> everybody went crazy. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of, it, of the story. Um, that I picked it up, but now not many writers uh, Marvel has to make me interested in picking up the new X-Men books from comic book shop. 
back um back when i was living in uh, john da costa's end of the country in kitchener waterloo in ontario mm -hmm. in like mm -hmm. 98 99 2000 right around then i'd started kind of getting back into comics mm -hmm. um it was like the batman no man's land was going on at the time um and i started getting <clears throat> into spawn and hell spawn and and all of these things because they were there just super cheap and i remember i had that whole sam and twitch that first series and that was one of the highlights of mm -hmm. all of that spawn stuff i was reading the spawn related stuff i really i thoroughly enjoyed like they're long gone out of the collection now but i thoroughly enjoyed that that first series there i thought oh, it was great because like you like i i grew up on detective shows and you know nypd <sighs> blue shows and that kind of thing oh, right yeah. like i love that stuff so sam and twitch kind of filled that niche that niche i guess but like the other thing about those spawn books is there were so many of them. I was finding mm. them in cheap bins. So it was easy to collect that yeah. stuff too and not really cost you a lot of money. So, yeah. Good start. You say that's the thing, what he does. And he's going to do the same thing for the ultimate Spider Man, in my opinion. And yeah, great. But everything came afterwards. But uh, yeah. And that's the thing with Hickman, yeah. who, who you can keep up <clears throat> with his way of dissecting the story and put that in the paper. I mean, I mean, he is likes to go from one history part to another history part to put that together and makes you get you really interested in it, talking about Hickman. And everybody else is, you can't, you know, especially, you know, if you don't have the same chops, writing chops as the, the Hickman does. Right. Yeah. Yep. But they seem to think it's, uh, well, I don't know how they think of that, but it's kind of <laughs> beca it's becoming really kind of like non-ending story with them. But because like I think you, Damien, were talking when he was doing live shows about the Marvel maybe not investing enough time anymore on doing this. It's just like okay, let's just turn out number one to get money. And that's it. We we'll mm -hmm. go back and no more investing in the in the good writers, no more investing in the good artists, or just like Ultimate Spider-Man. One book I probably was curious about to pick it up. Guess what? Choked for one week. Second week, couldn't find it. Now in, in the fifth printing, right. number one, fifth printing. Yeah. But because it's Hickman's writing, I was like, oh, damn, why didn't I pick it up? Because I always curious what he comes up with. Hickman is always intriguing. But now it's it's going to be, what, 12 issues and it's going to be gone. So wait for the trade or whatever that 12 issues afterwards pass. You're probably going to read really good storyline and sit. That's it. Probably mm -hmm. going to be end of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I want him Agreed, to Travis, finish. I agree. Black Mon Monday murders. Come on, man. Yeah. I want to know what's happening in that story. But of course, it's because of the artist's trouble with health. That's why it ended, isn't it? As far as I remember. Oh, is that true? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I noticed more writers getting in the idea that villains shouldn't be vill villainous as they anymore, like Magneto. Okay. I mean, it's good to see it's good to see writers moving away from like the black and white good versus evil thing, because that that gets a bit tired after a while, too. Like yeah. the complexity of people, I think, is interesting. But again, I'm speaking about a world I know nothing about the X-Men <laughs> stuff. So but I just that idea in general would be more appealing to a reader like me. Right. Where it's not necessarily just a here's the good guy. Here's the bad guy. The bad guy always does bad. The good guy always does good. That gets a well, little, it gets a little tired. You, you know, you want to see a little more complexity. Or I, I do, sorry, speaking for myself. I wonder when Hickman is going to go back to his indie stuff. Because I guess because he gets big money from uh, from Marvel. I mean, what's the point? You know, so far he's getting paid probably quite well. Gets the name out. Yeah, Everybody yeah. raving about his, his, his comic books. So you get everything, whatever you kind of wanted in the work. And Hard to say no to money to a fat paycheck. Yeah, especially, you know, it, it depends what he wants, but it seems to be he's doing a really good job. And everybody's just like, like as I say, if you get the ultimate Spider-Man to read for people to go, I mean, Spider-Man has always been a good uh, comic book for people who like Spider-Man comic books. But ultimate Spider-Man seems to be, uh, everybody's talking about it now. So it's another thing for Marvel, which is good. But how would it be good afterwards? It's always a big, biggest question. Like the same with X-Men. Went really, really well. But afterwards, everybody's like, what's going on with the storyline? We don't understand what's happening with them. So, and that's mm -hmm. the problem. Okay, your turn. Uh, okay. I'll talk okay. about uh, this one. So, again, I don't have a huge pull list. So, I went, mm -hmm. I think I picked up 
did I have yes. one? I had one book in my pull list at uh, Galaxy, um, sure. Galaxy Comics being the big place in town. And I always look, I always end up looking at the racks and looking at the independent stuff. And there's always stuff that's interesting, but never anything that I want to take a chance on. Oh, yeah. Until yeah, I yeah. found this one, this Helen of Windhorn. Um, this was probably my favorite read of the week, honestly. I think it also helped, like, it's Tom King writing. Mm -hmm. I don't have a strong opinion about him either way, but I do recognize his name. So that was, and I also recognize this Clayton Cowell's name as well, too. This was such a good book. The the art in the art and the coloring is just phenomenal in this book. I really think that this duo, let me get their credits proper here. Art by Bilquis Evely, colors mm -hmm. by Matthias Lopez, and letters mm -hmm. by Clayton Cowles, written by Tom King. She did um, Sandman Universe, new one. Oh, right. Okay. Uh -huh. That's why. He, um, he... There's some there's some choices that are being made in here. Let me find this page. The These pages, yeah, these ones here really stood out to me. I don't oh. know how well it, oh. it shows up, but it's this kind of like turquoise look. And then yeah. matched with kind of this and the detail of drawing. There's something about the kind of squat facial features that reminded me of Friday. Um, this is really, this is a, and it's a wonderful story as well too. So mm -hmm. it's this kind of, it's this woman that's come to kind of uh, um, be sort of not quite the nanny. I can't think of like the, the right word for it. She is looking after this woman who's, I think, 16 years old. She's a pretty heavy drinker. She has to bail her out of jail. Um, her father has died, and they're going to live with the grandfather. And um, it was, it was, yeah, hey, you know this one, Travis? Yeah, it, I really, oh, yeah. really enjoyed this one. I'm really glad I gave this one a shot. Um, I'm going to put it on my pull list for sure. I'm curious where it's going to go. Her character is fantastic. <laughs> They're giving her this tour of the mansion and she's mm -hmm. not really interested until they find the wine cellar. And one guy's trying to tell her all this stuff about how fancy the wine is. And she smashes it just so she can start downing it. And that's kind of how she spends the rest of the book. They often just find her out in a hallway um, mm -hmm. with a bottle cradled in her <laughs> arm. So she's obviously got some things that she's going through. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's great. And then we get this twist um, you know what? No, I won't. I won't give you. There's no. Don't, there's a twist don't get the way. Say there's a twist at the end. Yeah, there's a twist Shush. at the end yes. that really makes it intriguing as to where this story is going to go. But I, I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. This was a, a, a really, and it's a substantial sized book too. It feels like it's a, it's pretty decent thickness. So it's all the 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 uh, the nanny, I guess, kind of talking about it. She's getting interviewed. And looking mm -hmm. back at her life. So she's kind of reliving these experiences. Um, it's beautiful. Beautiful stuff. I'm really glad to see everybody is way more aware of this artist than I am. Uh, because <laughs> it's not someone that I'm super familiar with. So, But yeah, this was a, a, a good, a really good, a really great gamble rather. So yeah. Well, well, good stuff, man. So I... I I forgot about it, and that's it now. It's twelve pounds, uh, an issue on eBay. Lovely. Holy shit! Already. Uh huh. And it's not been a, a week. Has it been a week? Maybe it's been a week. Is it? I mean, this came out on Wednesday. Yeah, as far as I understand, this just came oh, out a couple of days. Just came ago. out. Oh my god. I, oh, I yeah. think so. I mean, someone will correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I thought it was just this week. Yeah. Uh, sounds like the king went to fun university. Yeah, probably boosted up a little bit more. Anyway, why am I buzzing? Don't buzz. Stop buzzing. <laughs> Stop buzzing. Um, I decided to get another number one, but because I've been oh, it's been a couple, a couple of weeks, weeks now. now. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, there, there you go. go. All Let's right, see. It makes more. Well, I'm more glad more. I was able to find a copy then. Yeah, you're lucky. I went. And that's, that, that's that shop. That shop is really good of keeping things in stock. Like they order a lot because they're kind of they're arguably the biggest shop in town, so they order a lot of Ooh. stuff. So there you go. That's even worse. Oh, there you go. Okay. And they get short of the copies. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. I went on getting. Oh, nice. Yeah. Four, uh, four parts of Eric Powell's The Goon, 
them that don't say dead, them don't say dead. Um, I always uh, there was a uh, I think a mini beforehand as well, but uh, I, I'm i I really like the goon. And I even have all the library editions, which guess what? I haven't finished them all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a shame. Anyway, but this story is really good. Uh, it's like what you expect from Goon sto stories. This lady is uh, running on, away from this really creepy looking dudes. And then that's what the Powell's really good at. Creepy. Oh, it's really do. And he has this character. So he has lovely girl. So we will be following her. So she's the one who's running away. And it seems to be uh, things happening. Also, he's doing a little bit of... Um, Kind of political uh, things was happening, and then there's just this uh, group of uh, called Harumph, which is hetero Anglo radical revolution utilizing mainly power heritage. <laughs> <laughs> so they are the ones who they basically a woman supposed to be in the kitchen only ba uh, doing the babies, and the outspoken group of people who mainly are talking about that is you know like this kind of crowd and um, basically the the person uh, who's after the goon is this this kid this is the kid he's known the kid with uh, and he has dead goose in his hand and that's what he's known for and he is the he thinks the goon is this, this biggest uh, enemy of his and he's been attempting to murder him for many times he's been recruiting and re recruiting and recruiting a lot of people to get him murdered and he's so into this task that he's going to any kind of lengths to achieve that so he goes to this house where apparently they get a hold of all sort of mystical books where you you know like you can really put proper yes black and white is amazing isn't it mm -hmm. uh a lot of things um where you can magically kind of put a spell on or or resurrect somebody else and that's his attempt um and it's really good. And and Goon is, meets this girl who we uh, I showed you in the previous video. We sit down in the bar. She's kind of bitchy. It's like, what are you doing here? She's like, I just want to sit down. The, the Goon says, I just want to sit next to you because there's only one stool left. She's like, okay, fine. And then afterwards, she said, like, do you want a drink? And then they basically drink a bit, <laughs> and they have this conversation between each other, and where she's like, um, basically propositions him to do something uh, extra curriculum after that. And then when when they do that. <laughs> Um, his buddy, you know, that uh, sidekick he has, uh, and he's like, "Where's Where's Goon? I can't find him. Where's Goon?" And he's, "I don't want to spoil, but this 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 is the scene. Oh, this is the scene. He's like shocked to see the Goon <laughs> lying there in the closet. <laughs> like, what happened to you? Did somebody do something to you?" And he's like, "Yeah, but not what you think." <laughs> kind of <thing. laughs> so it's really cool. I, I, it's really entertaining. He still has his own. Um, uh, stuff and what's happening and it, it ends up in, uh, in the part where somebody gets it oh she, oh my, okay that's a bit of a spoiler but something happens to her I don't know if you've seen it but anyway so he's trying to resurrect somebody who has made it somebody a uh, mm. hat ornament so it's not I don't know what's going to happen it's usually quite bad but Gun always comes up you know like a, a winner but it's still extremely ent entertaining mm-hmm and Black Moon, uh, I think that point is better than Sagat. Who's the title word? <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. I don't know about Saga as well. But it seems to be not many people are saying it's going to come back. I don't know about rumor spill. Are we going to come back, do you think? Anybody? I've just completely lost interest in Saga. Not not yeah. because I wasn't like I was really I was really enjoying it quite a bit actually, but yeah. when it went on that very first kind of big 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 hiatus and it came back, I just I didn't end up picking it up anymore, you know. I mm -hmm. think I've even sold off the issues to be honest. Yeah. Um we've got a couple of the graphic novels, but yeah, I just <gasps> haven't had any interest to go back to it. Oh, the funny story. So I, I had this uh, first volume of Saga in my collection, and I wanted to give that to a fr friend. Had friends of the friend had a birthday, and they give a we gave him that a Saga as a as a as a present, yeah. And guess what? It came back to me. <laughs> they didn't like it. 
<laughs> no, I don't know. It didn't happen that way, but they kind of like oh. they had to move out. So they saw like, oh yeah, you know, like you because I know you care about comics, like <laughs> you just like, back. <laughs> like damn, I can't I can't get rid of this. <laughs> Keeps coming back <laughs> like a boomerang. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Uh... That I was trying to get rid of it, but it just like feels like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Oh wow. New issues coming out in months. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that's talking about saga. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going for that one straight away? Okay. Yeah, yeah because I how oh, happy you. were you to see this back on the shelf this week? Oh yeah, because the, the hiatus, yeah. He's so so Rick Remender was talking about hiatus as well. We were talking a couple of weeks afterwards. Like, how long will it take for us to wait? And no, not long, eh? What, a month? Not very long, no. month and a half, maybe, we had to wait? Something like that, yeah. It didn't seem yeah. like very long, that's for sure. Uh. So but, you see, I'm talking about the cover. This very flimsy, huh? Eh? Yeah, totally. Very flimsy. very flimsy. Yeah, it's what Jared would say. It's the same as the interior paper stock, right? It's the exact same yeah. thing. Exact same I paper. Were you confused? Because I was confused. I mean, I know he started no, a new storyline. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't confused. I, I, I loved this issue, and it was cool. a good reminder of of how much I love this book. Because yeah. man, oh man, did I! I thoroughly enjoyed every single page of this issue. Um, mm -hmm. But that's been the way for all seven issues so far. I really, yeah. really like this book so far. Don't don't you think this art is even better now? It really feels like it is. Yeah, absolutely. You it's see, you just see like, stunning. Yeah. You see that he's... Uh, oh, I don't know. Travis, you picking that up. I presume you are. You are a fan of Rick Remender, aren't you? Um, uh, I really like the art. I think the break, whatever, if it's the break he had to do for the art's sake, if that's what's going to, going to happen and we're going to get this immense... This wave scene, one of yeah. my favorite stuff to see. Yeah, it's so, so cool. difficult to portray because of you mm -hmm. know the sheer amount of it he doesn't use a lot of lines like he doesn't scratch it at it kind of thing there is of course quite a lot of it to work on but still just looks so beautiful in the same way and scary mm -hmm. um so is this and that was also a... like an interesting part of the story too right like yeah. where you see these people you know we're talking about the sacrifices we're talking yeah. about people that go and and give up their you know their firstborn or whatever it is right and then actually going to the gods and going, hey, listen, we're making this sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck have you done for us lately? And then this yeah. guy like begrudgingly is like, oh, all right, I guess I'll come and try to help. You know, it's yeah. and it's so well done. And then when you get to that page oh, yeah, where yeah. he's kind of like trying to lay down the law and you do yeah. the page turn and this is yeah. what's coming at them. Like, forget about Shit. it, man. It's it's cool because it just puts all that power into a bit of perspective and kind of like i i love politics and it feels like there's a little bit of like a political yeah, yeah. thing going on in here like i really mm -hmm. i really like that opening yeah yeah and you look really the, cool. the, the eyes of of absolutely like wow oh, i am the god i'll do my, so my job and and then how how that's small, fear in those eyes man that's fear but how small he's at in comparison to what's coming it and he's absolutely. a god don't forget so this is a so you're not I gonna presume, do shit son so this is a consequences of the moon yeah because the, what happened to the moon in previous issues yeah yeah so this is the consequence and like we say because if the moon happens the waves and all, all all the current is gonna go away and that's what's happening so i guess this, this is just consequences of what happened to her and mm -hmm. to the people and maybe show the that the gods aren't really but this so heartbreaking to be honest to see the yeah. absolute destruction of the character we saw and we were thinking i still don't know if she's the main character to be honest i don't understand what i mean at this, at this point i feel like she's the main character now i feel like it's you think so? it's pretty much there that she's gonna be and oh. you know i don't know what the heck is gonna happen to her based on this but i loved yeah. all the narration of her thinking yeah. about uh, her mom and talking about her mom it, it really yeah. This whole book on like transition and change and again mm -hmm. like i think it also hit me in a way because of what we were talking about earlier the piss yeah. things and feeling yeah. like i've had to change myself right like mm -hmm. this kind of changing to your environment and just the look on her like the way she's drawn in these panels here like yeah. 
Yeah, she yeah. looks like she's aged since the last book. She looks like she's really weary. You know, it's, yeah, man, it's well, a good book. Don't forget, Go she got her life essence being. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So, of course, that's why she's going to be look so, so, you know, like out of Emaciated. Soul. Yeah. And then you well, never I, know. I, went into, I yeah. went into Galaxy earlier on in the week. And then yeah. I came back to get, because mm -hmm. I wanted to pick up this issue because early in, in the week, yeah. Uh, a couple of the guys in the shop were talking about it and saying, oh, yeah, it's back this week. And I overheard them and was saying like, oh, man, that's great to hear. I love that book. And they were kind of like, yeah, it's it's OK. It's kind of taken some, you know, it's pretty predictable. And I was kind of blown away by that statement. Like, yeah, sure, it's not groundbreaking and like a complete mystery. But I wouldn't say that this book so far has been predictable. It's taken some pretty substantial kind of twists and turns so far. Yes, maybe mm. there's an overarching theme that's maybe they're thinking that's a little predictable. But I mean, I wouldn't yeah. say that this book has been, I wouldn't say it's the most predictable comic I think I've ever oh. read in my life. I do feel yeah. like there's stuff being pulled from issue to issue. Yeah. And the next one, he says, yeah. It, yeah. Did you see the cover? The cover is that one. Yeah, it looks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Even the it's, other it's so good, dude. All of this stuff, too, that's happening yeah. to her on these pages. Like, man, I'm yeah. so invested in this in, yeah, in a big yeah. way. I'm invested in this book. I'm, like, I'm really curious what the hell is going to happen here, you know, and yeah. what is she what is she absorbing and what's that going to do to her and all of that kind of oh. anger and frustration and how is that going to transform her? Like, it's uh, it's solid, solid shit. Mm. It's very good. I really like it. Um, oh, I wanted yeah, to so why why Travis is uh, still online. Travis, have you picked up this by Rick? Because I don't know if you've seen Lullaby. it. Do you remember we were talking about it? And yeah, because it didn't scream at me, and I didn't really kind of like wanted to even think about it getting. But I was wanted to maybe Travis you because I I I, I watch your videos on your um when you put post. I'm talking Travis, uh, but I don't know if, it, if I, I don't think I've seen you picking that up. I just wanted to ask mm -hmm. if you were curious about it. What's your feelings towards it? Oh, yeah, you did pick it up. It oh. was okay, he said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's why. Uh, anyway, not everything. Look, not everything can, can, can click for everybody else, you know? So yeah. I guess we're talking about this one next then. Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, give her. Oh, I picked that up. Seemed interesting enough. To see where it goes. Okay, cool. Um, would be nice to hear more thoughts of when you guys are gonna read more. Kaya, Kaya. So the so the the first thing about this new issue of Kaya, I had read a bunch of other stuff. Uh -huh. Man, is this a thin book? There oh, is yes. not that many pages in here, especially compared to the other stuff. It was like, what yeah. are we, what are we getting here? No wonder the book. This one feels thinner than previous issues. No wonder there's art all the way to the back inside cover because they haven't yes. added enough pages to the book. It felt yeah. so thin. Yes. Um, what did and you so think? Fast. Of it? Very fast. So fast. I really like this. I, I am really into this. I want more of that. It's got a bit more mystery again. And there's this character appeared. Um, yeah. uh, what is this? Uh, wait, where is that? You know the character afterwards appears when he was fighting it? who's chained him up um, and there's this dude talking to him. So that's really intriguing to me. I really like, mm -hmm. I really like that magic part. Really enjoy uh, that. He continuously exploring the storytelling in one issue. He grabs yeah. all information. Now it doesn't seem like convoluted anymore. It seems to be really well placed, at, at least my opinion. It just felt like there was not as you know, like we were complaining, it was quite wordy and it was like really slow information. This one felt really fast, okay? Because it is kind it felt of like too a fast. Of... It felt so fast that it's like, why wasn't this part of the previous issue or something? Yeah. Like I, I mean, really I was disappointed where it felt like I want mm -hmm. more because I've loved this, like we've talked about it every week, um, or that we've read it. I've I've really enjoyed this book up to this point. It's uh -huh. back to a spot where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I I enjoyed it. I still liked it. I'm still continuing out. I don't know if I loved this issue though. It felt too, yeah, too it fast. felt too thin and it didn't really bring the story ahead enough for me where mm. this really felt like, why wasn't this just do a double sized or a, a, an issue and a half of number 16 to give us mm. 
what was in here into one mm -hmm. issue because it really mm -hmm. felt kind of mm -hmm. as beautiful as the art is. And I love Wes Craig's stuff. I, I, I just really didn't get much out of this particular issue. I'm mm -hmm. still invested in the story, though. Like this, these pages were beautiful as Ooh. well, too. Absolutely. By the way, Absolutely. that was really, really nicely 21. done. So it's normal. 21 pages. 21 pages. Yeah, it feels really thin, though, doesn't it? Like, it's maybe, maybe it's paper. just me. I have 16 here as well. Let's see if it feels the same. Yeah, no, 16 feels about the same. So is this uh, numerous lives of the the family? Or is him? Well, I don't know. Or is it? Is it? Yeah, that's a good way to read it. I never thought of that. I looked at it as like the the... Yeah, no, I think you're right. Now, now that you said that out loud, I think you're 100 percent right. Because they say that they have, he has history. We have history beforehand right. that there is lots of before, like there's expectations of of, from him, you know, because he has this name, the 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 golden one, you know, like that one. So I really, I only totally makes you know, sense. I, I I agree. It's very fast paced thing, and I think sometimes it's difficult uh, when it comes. But there's lots of it goes by the story still, you know, like you get whatever you were paying off from previous issue you know when she went into the water and another one another artist who does the water or underwater beautifully seen and he, he is coloring okay yeah. and this is spot on i just love yeah, these really pages and i really like the panel yeah. sequences it's not confusing either and then it's the saving part i really like that you know like the way you know they are going upwards and it's just, you can see that they're going to escape and stuff uh, and I wonder what kind of consequences she's going to have because at the end of the day, the well is what the brother, don't forget, mm -hmm. had seen. So we'll see if that's going to come into things because she's going to fight yeah. back. And I like that they was fighting back. But yes, they even the, la the last page of the <laughs> comic book, you still see it. And there's this like back page. So, But mm -hmm. I, I'm still a, a, such a fan of it because of the... Uh, art and generally and, and the character still and it still makes me intriguing intrigued and I like that snippet of information we got from um, that scene of him um, you know tra tra trancing I don't know on the trance yeah yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's that's a that's totally valid. It is fast paced because it's a fast paced scene, but yeah. that the my problem is that it just felt like a scene that could have been put in a car. Mm. It didn't feel like an issue. It just felt like a scene from that past issue where it's like she dives into the water and then let's just continue with that scene, right? So it it, it added a touch to the story, but not a ton, right? And also kind of the worry that we had for him after drinking the the blood of the shy Halud, going back to our <laughs> June references that we were talking about. Um, uh -huh, yeah. it, it just, it feels really quick that, oh, he's good. He's back out of it. You know what I mean? It it yeah. was kind of like the stakes and then oh, yeah, stakes yeah. Quickly, quickly resolved right and again like we talked about it before that this is really like it's more of a ya kind of a story right uh mm -hmm. not a criticism just a fact it, it feels like so maybe that's mm -hmm. where some of those storytelling beats come from it's mm -hmm. more for kind of a younger general audience as opposed to uh yeah. what most of us are old old crusty people uh reading comics <laughs> talk about yourself i'm <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Although, so yeah, but I mean, yeah. I'm still I'm still liking it. But Sacrificers and that Helen book really beat it out this week for me for well, sure. That's the, the that's so the thing. I'm really excited about Sacrificers. I I was surprised actually how excited I was about it. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. You got the other ones, which can be because of the okay. Sacrifice is talking about Rick Remender's writing. You know, he's known now for being a writer, and this guy right. is just getting there so it's another way you can think of it but i really like it i mean for the adventure part of the storyline it lends itself for what it is and i think i'm, I'm somehow okay with it as i say it's refreshing mm. maybe to be reading yeah. as fast maybe as well because you got the point but yes the reward would be nice if you would be explaining a bit more of, con of consequences than being drinking the water the well water and she's diving into it because you know the scenes we had on the issue prior to that Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if her arm is gonna grow back or something. Oh yeah, but but she put that thing on, you know, to fight. She did, yeah. That was a pretty yeah. good. That was a pretty good scene as well, too. Yeah, when exactly. she, she put that back on, it was that was a good panel as well. Ah, yes. yeah, exactly right. That's yeah. yeah. That's honestly what it felt like. It was one of those weeks where yeah, it was yeah. like, damn, 
this is a lot of good reading. Like it was really, really nice to kind of be reminded again because of how horrible the week was. Like yeah. it was really nice to be reminded that fuck man, this stuff is great. It's so enjoyable. It's just, you know, like, yeah. A good side of it, comic books. And yeah. we talk this one, yes? You got this one as well, yes? Shit, yeah, I sure did, yeah. This is good. I'm, uh, I'm full on Usagi Yojimbo these days. Yeah, it looks like it. You got the you got the infection. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is really good. I mean, I I really liked yeah. it. Uh, it's well. also very good. You know, like it continue. It's in continuation, even though there's this part one, part three, part four, and or whatever he says that. It's actually mm -hmm. quite. Maybe it's good that he doesn't have that plastic big number two hundred seventy five in continuation. Because uh, honestly, it, I'd rather he had that though. I'd rather, no, I'd rather that's what it said on there. Yeah. But it's all if you, you know, like if you follow it through, it's that continues. Like after the big scenes we had with them and fighting in the mountains, they finally yeah. out. They're super excited about it. Finally, the and warmth of the grass. I was Go just on. gonna say, like, it was one of those things too after that last so story cheery. arc where. Yeah, you could feel, and when I was reading it, I could feel this panel. Yeah. I felt this panel of like the warmth. Yeah, it was spring. really nicely done, like you know, a kind of nod to where they were and where they're going now. You know, I yeah. thought that was really nicely done. It's yeah, I know. It, it feels like um, once again, it will be intriguing enough story. I like the 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 surprise elements of who's the bad guy, who's the good guy. Mm -hmm. always which is really good yep. it was a very good payoff they were no clue we didn't have a clue until we get to the point when they found out which is absolutely fantastic yep. well told action scenes are fantastic as always fight scenes i really like that they didn't use the they put the sheath in like we didn't take it out the the swords out of the sheaths and they were just banging yes. people on the head that's what's yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah. part of it because they do they Showing weren't really skills, sure but also they're kind of yeah, exactly. They weren't really kind of refrain. Yeah, exactly. They weren't really sure about uh, you know what situation they are at, so we're not gonna make terrible decisions and kill somebody yeah. without knowing. They and even still bad feel bad afterwards because of the the information of who mm -hmm. supposedly this guy is it true though? He looks so such a <laughs> such a good guy on the pages of he sure science. does well, and that's I'm assuming that's where the twist is going to come in, right? That uh, exactly, you know, maybe yeah. this guy isn't the bad guy. You know what else surprised me because I'm not yeah. obviously not very observant. I thought yeah. that Usagi's cousin was a female, and if I doubt ah, in this no. one, it's a, it's a male, yeah, no, I yeah. it goes to show how much. But the other thing that that spoke to me about was I, I kind of looked through the issue again, yeah, it's amazing that you can just create these characters, like it's a very feminine looking character there's something about the way the face is drawn that's no. very feminine and maybe that's yes. just supposed to read as kind of youthful and things right yes. but yeah just, it's, it's amazing it's kind of a little more um it's not simplistic art i don't want to call it that but it's no no it's just it's incredible not. what you can portray just with a couple of lines on a page i guess is how i ended up looking at the book when i found that bit of information out i really again, like I, that just, i'm not Paying attention through the rest of them because I'm sure it was very explicit before. <laughs> I really like his uh, Japanese couple of snippets to use to even translate yeah. to us what it is. So I always wondered what is that ha haime ha what I I can't even say it, but you know that word then they greet somebody and they really polite and they bend over and say and it says I'm glad to meet you for the first oh, time. Yeah. That's free, like that's kind of clicked because I watched quite a few, you know, like those um, uh, Japanese TV shows or you know, the subtitles, and they always say that and they're really, really polite. And then, you know, that you know, the way that the culture is. So, I, I'm finally kind of like a little bit more reassured, like because it translates correctly, like fully, not like just hello, but that means yeah, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. the whole meaning that it's the first, the first time, and that's the yeah. word is the first time, so it's kind of intriguing, yeah. As well. So I've never, I've never seemed to be. I, I don't. I'm not that good. Were very versed in the uh, Itagi universe, but I. These two characters are new to me, and I guess it's for you, to, new to you as well. The ones who. I uh, know. Basically... I recognize. I recognize the Rhino guy from the the black and white the the book that I've been reading the the collected oh, edition it? rather. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. So I've I've seen him before. I don't recognize the other one. The though. dog. The dog. Uh, yeah. But again, I'm I'm sure he's been around too. So. I bet. 
Well, yeah, and they in have honor these... in honor of them, I'm I'm drinking sake as well too. So, oh, I see. <laughs> in honor, I was waiting for this book. I had to, you know, had to be. Yeah, I, I saw you down in couple, but I was like thinking, what, yeah, yeah. what was the choice this time? But you you are you are a fan of sake anyway, so. I yeah. love it. Anyway, yeah. any really very good. That's like how many? Oh, even five us. So it's quite a, it's quite an intense storyline we we're seeing. Uh, it's gonna be five issues. It's not not that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Know people have who have. Later, Angie Lopez. Thanks for hanging out. As always, good to see Rock you, man. And roll. Really good. And yeah, I was looking at the covers at the back. Where you were showing the pictures of. And guess what I was doing afterwards? I went on eBay oh. to see how much is actually. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish I would have found. I really wish like that shop usually has a lot uh, of the variant covers and they didn't have it because I would have bought that yeah. cover. I love that cover so much. And that's because I know yeah. I'll never actually own the toy itself. But uh, even having a cover with it on there will be would be sufficient as much as I want. Like the black and white one is the one I was looking at before of Usagi uh, that with that same kind of detailed line work on it it's beautifully is that the designed one, is that the one based on this issue yeah space Usagi yeah that figure I'm not sure it might be yeah it, may, it might be yeah, based yeah, on yeah, that yeah. one I yeah. Think it, yeah I yeah. think because it was well. anyway oh yeah so I finally uh drew one thing so that's from the space stuff there you go. oh look at that make yourself big there let's see that <sighs> So we finally put this pen oh, together. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, a bit oh, mid went crazy. Oh, again, that's, over there. that's directly that's to, to ink, right? Like you're not penciling anything out. No, that's ink. It's awesome. Yeah, I was like, there's not proportional, to be honest. I could tell you where and what, but it looks actually okay on the page, so I'm not saying anything. That Fuck is the mistake. It looks, that's it what looks mi awesome. Don't, uh, don't downplay it. That shit looks good. That mistake is really gonna bother me. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Because, yeah, yeah. Because I drew the the ear, I was like, oh shit, where is the sword? Sword is gonna go over that. And I was like, ah, when it, it bothers me. But anyway, that's fine. A little but bit of white out to fix that. Well, I'm I'm not using white out on purpose. It's just to keep yeah, me right. a little bit annoyed. But this is from this issue, which I showed you just now. And where is that scene where they had really nice fight scene? I really love that fight scene on that issue. Where is this? Where is that page? Shut up. Where are you? Of course, I never can find when I want it. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the one. Oh, that one. Ooh, go this way. There. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, there you that's go. That's the one. And that's, uh, and that's my take on it. Yeah, it looks cool. I like it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll back that lawsuit there. I'll back that. <laughs> But anyway, it's nice to. It's because of Ed. I I kind of like. Okay, I need my. This is what yeah. you do as a creative. You go somewhere. So I do, because I have depression. Well, I used to have depression. Hopefully, this way let's take it. I keep journal journal or write down my 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 head. That's how I talk to somebody, mm -hmm. and I and this helps as well. And that really actually helped. And I guess what I was watching. I was watching cartoon Faye Babe. K oh, Faye nice. video. Yeah, it's awesome. That, so. I just wanted, you know, to have that feeling again because it's really good to be honest, having somebody talk about comic books while you're drawing a comic book part. So that would love. Mm -hmm. it. Oh my god. I'm, I'm That's afraid already. Lots of... <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah. So this is my uh, a little bit that that's where I how, how how I was processing it the week. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not bad to be honest. I was happy to be it's really nice to go to that headspace it's very difficult to approach it that space yeah and then the people like who has a the art studios it really helps for creatives where everything mm -hmm. is already ready you just need to sit down of course you have to yeah. convince yourself to go sit down or whatever pick up the the tool of of trades and then you go oh yes oh, forgerelli hello welcome hello Nicest yes. creator I've ever met. That's great to hear, man. I, I doesn't it surprise like me his. whatsoever. It's nice that you know, like, don't meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. You never know. You know, never know. Or but, better yeah. yet, don't don't prop people up as heroes. Then you won't be disappointed. Yeah, true. You know, yeah. just human beings. They're all just human beings, man. 
Yeah, exactly. But that's my. Yeah, I mean, this week, this week yeah, I did I mean, a lot of music and stuff to kind of like you're saying about creativity and stuff. Like it was nice yeah. to kind of have a creative out out uh, an mm -hmm. output. I guess like honestly, it's it's crucial. Those kind of things are crucial to have for yourself. I think like it helps yeah. to kind of focus and. It, I, I find it really changes my mindset when I get into those huh. sessions or whatever. I'm sure it's the same with you with drawing, like come yeah. out the other end and it's a completely, you feel different afterwards. Right. So. Yeah. There's some, some music really clicks. Sometimes he actually inspires me to go to do that. It's also yeah. uh, of course, situational, like that situation like that helps me to just vent and of course, keeping a journal, which is, it's funny, I'm I'm writing that in Lithuanian, so <laughs> my husband definitely is not going to be able to, to read that. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's just because my my head sometimes, I just need to keep that Lithuanian kit ticking because I am, as okay. I say, been living in this country for so long that I tend, I re, I'm, I, I think I'm really basic when it comes to Lithuanian language. Now, the, the usage of my words, some of them I can't even understand. My mom is like, like, she, like she's she my mom the way she deals with me she gets silent for a bit and she just like politely says like do you mean by this sometimes she's like oh you're losing it i was like i'm trying not to but it's very difficult not Hilarious. to be, because i'm not yeah. using the language for so so as often as i should but yeah right anyway that's just me yeah okay. Do you have anything else you're gonna share? Do you read more? Um, you read I do. More? Did, did you not read? You didn't get this then. I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. I'm waiting for the 150, and I'm hopefully waiting for the Jason uh, thingy. Yeah, the Jason Aaron stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and? I won't talk about this one too too much. It was Go it was on, good to dip in. Like I'm really I'm really in the mood for Ninja Turtle stuff. Um, there's a lot I don't kind of understand about this. Like I guess. Yeah. This uh, this is the new leader of the Foot Clan, so the the modern day Shredder or whatever. Um, oh, she's the niece. It was intriguing. Sorry, what's that? She's a family member, so she's a niece of the Shredder. Ah, uh, okay. So she's in, she was in line to go into, and she's the one who's basically more ba badass than any other one choices were. Okay. Or kind of, she was in line to become one, but she didn't kind of want to. So yeah. And that's she's the whole. A bit of dire, she's in a bit of dire straits in this one in a hospital, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then. Yeah. This old guy comes and kind of has learned some healing. I guess there's a book that's involved and uh -huh. he's been learning some of the, the, the uh, spells for lack of a better word and kind yeah. of heals her. But um, yeah, it, it, it was, it was intriguing. Um, I'm, I'm down for it. What I did notice was they used this exact same cover for another Ninja Turtles book, not from the same series. I thought that oh, was no. a bit uh, odd. That was a bit strange to have. The exact same cover for two different turtle books i'm yeah. really looking forward to the jason aaron i mm -hmm. i, I kind of can't wait for it i think it's going to be yeah i'm excited about it i think yeah i'm, I'm kind of i am i know i am looking forward to that for sure i am intrigued yep. because i want to see um i'm really looking forward finally when this 150 is gonna come out because i want to kind of like see where that whole story was going for and why they're going for that, uh, you know, big number, you know, like saying, ooh, and where they're going to take the turtles afterwards will be intriguing. Mm -hmm. Because I say, it's just one thing, as I say, it's kind of when you're following something for so long and you're not looking for previous or information afterwards, you get really kind of surprised or taken aback a little bit. So hopefully it will be a good surprise rather than a bad one because you never know. It yeah, depends. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to Jason's irons because Jason Aaron is a good yeah. writer. That's the thing, and I loved everything about yeah, whatever he's like done. So hopefully, you will do the justice to the turtles. I, I bet he will. I wonder how much of a fan he is. That would be nice to find out because, like you know, like the Transformers guy, Daniel Warren Johnson, mm -hmm. you can clearly, clearly an Uber read fan. it. Yes, absolutely. Even though, like, I'm not really well versed in Transformers. You could feel in the pages how much he likes the Transformers. It's just like a care and attention given, you know, like so that's really nice. So hopefully Jason Allen will I bet he will do the justice. A lot of he's a really clever writer as well. And you know, like Thor stuff is one of my favorite things he's done anyway. Um yeah. so yeah, hopefully the, the turtles will go as, as big as that. Fan of the 80s Mirage run. That's cool. Just that's good to see. Ooh, ooh. 
What is that? What is that, Luke? That's what Gore Vidal is saying. Oh yeah, there you go. That one. That's awesome. That that gives me uh that excites yeah. me even more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Coming at it from a different perspective for sure. Oh, he did huge catches. Oh, it's like oh, good for you. Oh, that's pretty awesome, Forgerelli. That's pretty great. Yeah. Um, then just two, two more. This one, nothing to say about it. It's Firefly, the Fall Guys. Are you still enjoying the it? Final, the fine, yeah. This is the final issue. It was, it was mm -hmm. just a meh. It wasn't oh. a, a satisfying kind of ending. Um, oh. This, this mini series had its ups and downs. There was issues that I really enjoyed, but this uh -huh. ending was just so slow. Oh, there's a big reveal at the end. Zoe and her daughter are gonna leave Serenity, so that'll be the next series. They feel oh. like they've jeopardized the safety of the crew. So she's oh, wow. decided that we're leaving starting now kind of thing. So that'll be kind of where we explore in the next mini series. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was just okay. In all the Firefly stuff I've read, this was kind of mid range of uh, the Serenity Firefly stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the last one that I, I also, this was a gamble picking it up off the shelf, uh, washed what? in blood what? What uh, issue it? number one from massive this massive comic book uh company and holy it. shit man Is it this massive? was <laughs> fucking bonkers um there's your list of credits there okay this was a bonkers comic i don't really know <laughs> what's going on uh we start off with one art style that's very kind of generic and yes. literally the next page we get Ooh. this intensely colorful, almost pencil crayon. These are kind of, it, it's it's almost like the afterlife. Um, it's it's sort of like a Layla Star-ish thing is what I'm getting mm -hmm. the impression of. There's a god that keeps getting sent back to Earth, reincarnated oh. as a different kind of entity. But honestly, I don't even know if that's accurate because I really didn't kind of understand uh. what was going on. But every single page was a stunner. Uh, because oh. the art style changes multiple times. So then we get turn a page and there's Ooh. this art style, which is very, this is kind of like talking about uh, if Jesus came back yeah. as this kind of <laughs> dope smoking hippie, how he would be received <laughs> in the world. Uh -huh. um, so we jump from this very kind of underground uh, art style here, I, I would uh -huh. say, um, with these kind of political mm. leanings. And then we go back to this just amazing, yeah. like I said, it just feels like it's all pencil crayons and it, it just has that kind of level of detail and texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we jump to this style of cartooning for a little section that's wow. really kind of sketchy and illustrative and, you know, like you're watching a TV screen. Uh -huh. Um so is it a compilation or is it the same to, story? It's the same story. And then we jump to this art style, <laughs> which is again, very underground. So this is a pretty amazing uh, a book in just the kind of gambles that are being uh -huh. taken uh, on this art. Oof. And it really feels like, she looks very I, I, yeah, it felt really original. It was really kind of enjoyable to read, even though I can't really sit here and tell you what the hell was going on in it. Um, like I'm super intrigued by this book. Mm -hmm. So here's, uh, and then we get this. There's something about getting reincarnated as a gun or something. There's going to be a talking gun that's going to speak to people. And then, so everybody is, is looking for these guns and they're blowing their fucking heads off. Like uh -huh. just a very strange, a oh, very geez. strange, a very strange book. Uh, uh -huh. Feels like I said, feels very underground, like vintage underground comics. Um, uh -huh. So yeah, I'm I'm on board for this one. I'll be picking awesome. up the next issue of this. I've never, and I've never heard the of it. Creators, the yeah. creators have a podcast too where they talk about stuff. So um, oh. the QR code to listen to the full episode. So I haven't done that yet. I'd be curious to hear what they have to say about it uh, okay. to see maybe where their heads were at or or what they think. What okay, the man. fuck are they doing? <laughs> and then we get the usual kind of cover gallery of all the variant issues. Um, Whoa. So, yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is a wild book, man, washed in blood. Yeah. Gore's talking about the Firefly. 
and the legs. Yeah, the ship is like a dragonfly. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> It is dark. Well, it's really actually yeah. well made that the ship looks looks like. As yeah. It's it's very I think I don't know, Gore, do you think it feels dated to you the show? Because I think I watched uh a couple of episodes um I don't know how long ago, but I did watch it and I felt a little bit dated to me the way I mean I still like the show, don't get me wrong, but it just the 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 look of the of the show felt like a little bit dated to me. But I don't know, maybe just me. I think that's probably one of the things that got me not to watch it because there really was an era of sci-fi TV that yeah. had a very specific look to it. It yeah. looked like it was filmed on a set as opposed to they weren't really mm -hmm. striving for realism. Um, mm -hmm. and at the time that didn't appeal to me, that idea appeals to me a lot more now, but, huh. uh, yeah, I remember there being a look to some of those sci-fi shows that was just kind of not campy isn't the word, but it was more to that end of the spectrum than kind of realism. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, you definitely should go have, watch at least first episode. For, will, sure. for sure. You just have the feel of it. It's, it's, it's as I say, out there. And it's actually really, I mean, it's messed by some because of the obscurity of the itself, how it is. But if you are at all a space fan in mm -hmm. that kind of sense of it, so you 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 should like it as well. I, I mean, yeah, please cool. enjoy it for its sheer craziness, what they would try to put there out. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that it? Is, are we done? Are we done? That's it for me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, very good. Good week for comics, eh? I really wish Shit, that yeah. um, Helen Windermere is it Windermere? Is that what the name of that comic book? Uh, yeah. uh, I, I wish I would pick it up, but as I say, I'm not, not spending twelve pounds for issue, for one issue. Mm -hmm. it's absolutely I mean, crazy. It's, it's probably one of those books that's it'll be out yeah. in a trade. I can't imagine yeah, yeah, that well, definitely, definitely. isn't going to sell. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it'll make it out there at some point. Yeah, the art looks great, anyway. Okay. Yeah, I'm so glad I took a chance on it. Really happy I grabbed it. Yeah. So it's good to chat. Good to see you people. Maybe special books, yes, but not the stories. But not the stories. Yeah, cool. Very good. So, yeah. Oh, uh, we're going to go now. Uh, when we're going to yeah, come up, gonna... turn up, maybe next week. <laughs> Look out. We will for sure. Take yeah. care of yourself out there and don't, uh, don't get sucked into the cesspit of... of internet uh uh whatever we we want to call it these days just be careful be yeah. careful out there back to our detective show <laughs> be careful out there get on those streets hit the streets and then that's how we should sign off hit the streets that'll be our new sign off <laughs> and read, uh, read more comics and hit the streets <laughs> yeah right <laughs> okay bye bye <laughs> Oh, that awkward moment.